I'm Tam France, and I'm sat here with Manny. Justin Joe. What's up, guys? And hmm. I want to ask you some questions, sure. Manny. Uh, and you, I'm sure you've got questions for me. You're more prepared than I am. I do. Um, <laughs> however, I do want to make one statement. Okay. I was incredibly nervous, and let me tell you why. Why is that? You are the most handsome man on no, television right now. You I'm actually walk are. Out no, of that's this. actually true. No, like, I, I don't want to make, make you start sweating right now. But you are. Do you know this? Do no. people tell you already? No, that's, it's all it's fake news, Dan. That's don't not, listen to it. It's not fake news. It is. I, I told people that I was going to be interviewing today, and they're like, yeah, we know exactly who he <laughs> oh is. He's the most gosh. handsome man on television. I'm drinking this wa water to cool down right now. Well, th now that's done, we can move on like, okay. to more important matters. All right. Um, now, you prepared. Way more than I did. I tried to. Um, I, w I definitely watched a bunch of Queer Eye episodes. Okay. But I did before, but I just needed to catch up. Okay. Um, my girlfriend's a huge fan. That makes so, me so happy. So she told me all about you as well. Um, but but yeah. you prepared questions. Yeah, I did. I don't because I'm <laughs> just not the kind of person that prepares for anything. Okay. Uh, I wing it. You do very well at that. Thank you very much. Yeah. I mean, I built a career on winging it and faking <laughs> it. So you tell me what questions you've got for me, and I might just throw them back at you. Okay. <laughs> um, I guess one question that I had is, um, how did Queer Eye even come about for you? For me, it was uh, it was some okay. Real talk. Yeah. I had no desire. Okay. Um, I didn't ever come from show business. I never wanted to be in show business. Um, I had just, I was a business owner. I was a, a fashion designer. Oh, wow. um, and uh, and I was on somebody's Instagram. And as uh, somebody who was very popular, a blogger. Okay. And, uh, and Netflix saw me on that and asked if I might be interested in being on a show. Um, they I, just slid in your DMs. Yeah, literally. I had, uh, I had just retired five days before. Okay. And, uh, and, and I didn't want to do the job. And I was saying, now I'm not interested and then my husband convinced me to and let me tell you why it's because I had gone on and on and on for years harping on about the fact that I never see people like me on TV I see. and he was like finally you can be that person that you that you don't see in the media um, and yeah he's a really smart guy one of the reasons I married him and so yeah he, he he was actually the one who convinced me to go for the audition and then to finally take the job because even up to the day that I got the job, I said, yeah. no, I'm, I'm not interested. I, the pressure felt like a lot. I see. Well, like um, the audition process, was that something completely unique to you? Or were you like, I got yeah. this, this is in the bag? Well, because I didn't care. Um, it oh. was super easy. Totally, yeah. um, And so I, here's the thing. There were so many people at this audition and everybody wanted the job so hard. Okay. But because I thought there's no way on God's earth I'm going to get the job and I was too scared to do the job, mm. I didn't, it didn't bother me. So I went in there with so much confidence thinking I'm just going to get to know people. Yeah. And that got me the job. Oh my goodness. Tell me about how you got your job. <laughs> um, well, nobody slid into my DMs, unfortunately. That's a sad, so yeah. sorry with state of affairs. I know. Sorry state of affairs, <laughs> yeah. Um, but it was, I mean, I, I came down here for, for pilot season. I was doing a show up in Canada. Keep Canadian, everyone, just yes. in case you don't know. Canada represent. Yes. Um, came down here just to scope things out, see what LA was all about. Yeah. And then luckily enough, I had met with some managers and a manager took me on maybe a month before. Yeah. And she, she got me this audition um, for this show. Um, I don't know if it was called The Good Place yet, but okay. it was by our showrunner, show, show runner, sorry, Mike Scher, <clears throat> who has done The Office and Parks and Rec. So I knew I about- I did not know that. Yeah. Okay. I knew about his work, so I was a bit intimidated. Yeah. But um, it was just, yeah, I mean, I was at the right place at the right time and I was prepared for it and yeah. things just kept going in the right direction. Were they looking <clears throat> for a, an Asian uh, actor? Do you know? Or did they I, just I give think you the, the role? I think the spectrum was pretty wide, but I think okay. in general they were, in the back of their heads, they were looking for an Asian, an Asian person because they wanted um, kind of like a twist on the Asian nerd. Ah. You know, they wanted to see like yeah. the complete opposite. Yeah. You know, like a, an Asian who actually gets B's rather than A's. <laughs> and, um, yeah. Yeah. And when you uh, <clears throat> when you were auditioning, uh, how long have you been auditioning for shows? A long time? Um, I'd say 2012. Wow, yeah, a while. So okay. it's been a while, yeah. Do you find that uh, that your that your ethnicity works for you or against you? I think it's 
That's why I say this constantly. I am super lucky to be in this industry at this time yeah. because I think when I was getting in, people started to open their their minds a little bit to diverse mm -hmm. characters and diverse story, stories. Yeah. So in my experience, it's worked for me. Good. For sure. How about yourself? For me also, I think it worked for me. Yeah. I think that, so uh, our show Queer Eye is a reboot of yep. um, a show called Queer Eye for the Straight Guy. Mm -hmm. And it was um, four white guys and one uh, Latin, Latino guy, um, ah, his I name see. was Jay. And they wanted to, to create a show that was more representative, a little more diverse. And I represent like, quite a lot. I'm, yeah. uh, I'm South Asian, I'm British, I'm first generation immigrant, I'm gay. It, the, it just, it, it, I covered many, many bases yeah. and I think that they saw that as very appealing for their audience. It was a global show. Um, and so for me, I think it really did work in my favor. However, I think even if I had all of those things, I wouldn't have got the job unless I was able to have conversations with complete strangers. <laughs> like that's okay. a main part of my job. Yeah. However, I do feel so privileged to be on, on this show because I get to represent my community in a way that's never been represented before. I've seen brown people on TV before mm. who are from South Asia, but they are always playing a part. Okay. It's always a character that somebody's come up with. And it's often I see. a character that is a stereotype. I always knew that if I, uh, I was asked if I wanted to do more scripted work and I'm going to start doing some scripted work. And I've made it very clear, I will never play a terrorist. I will not play a taxi driver. I do not want to play into that stereotype. Yeah. I love that I'm in a position to be able to show people a very different side of who we are. For Isn't sure. that nice? It's incredible. And like you definitely touch a lot of people through that program. Yeah. Like I definitely was trying to hold tears this this afternoon yeah. watching watching some of the shows. That, or one of some of the episodes. I was gonna say that makes me happy, but that sounds super weird that I'm that you crying, <laughs> that makes, crying. brings yeah. me so much joy. Yeah. Uh, but no, I am glad that it touches you. Uh, because we are trying to target people who ordinarily probably wouldn't think, oh, I really want to watch a gay show. Yeah. Um, but it's so much more than that. We're trying to bridge a divide that's never been bridged before. Mm -hmm. And it is, in my opinion, it's the most real version of a reality show that you'll ever see. We, the things that we say are truly what we feel. We don't have people telling us what to say. Yeah. Um, and so it feels so like- So none of, like, you, are you guys given like an outline or anything nope, like that? Nope, we just, we meet somebody and they say, you've got up to three hours, you get to know them. And oh then on Monday is when we decide what the plot's going to be for the rest of the week. Um, Three hours? You get just, that's all you get? Sometimes if it's taking a long time to build a connection, you're like, you can get up to five or six hours. But I on see. the whole, that first day, we get to all, each of us get a few hours where we get to connect with, uh, with this person. Oh my gosh. And so yeah, you really do have to get used to speaking to strangers and finding a commonality. It's, it feels great. I mean, that is, I give you props because I mean especially with the people that you're talking to they're from completely different worlds yeah they're yeah. usually Republican <clears throat> they're usually not willing to speak to people like me and a couple of them in, in the past it, we, it, we didn't show this on season one season two but I was asked very confidently are you a terrorist um, and that's because they found out I was Muslim and I'm from South Asia oh like that gosh. was a general question that they thought was appropriate to ask and it just goes to show that there is a massive misconception of who we are yeah. uh, misperception of who we are and so uh, and so yeah that's why I feel so proud to be on this show when you were a kid <laughs> did you ever think oh I'm gonna get to represent my people no I was I was a kid in the corner just you know trying to uh, be, I'm being a fly on the wall just observing and like this whole industry or like the arts was completely left field yeah, because um, I grew up. I grew up playing sports, you know, and, and doing school and studying, mm -hmm. and like my whole route was engineering and like. What a stuff. surprise! <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. An Asian who's not an engineer, yeah. doctor, or lawyer. That's shocking. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. It was the path. Yeah. Um, and then it wasn't until I got into dance was I was I more exposed to the arts yeah um and like I, I felt something that i never felt before and i followed that feeling and yeah. luckily it led me here um i i think this is just a general for asians not just uh, your vision of asian south asians too we have only a couple of options available to us otherwise yeah. our parents see us as failures yeah we get I, yep um we <laughs> i was meant to be a doctor or a lawyer or okay. an engineer 
I also fell into the arts, but yeah. mine was um, uh, mine was design. Yeah. What did your parents say? Because I didn't know you were a dancer until today. I had no idea, <laughs> uh, an idea you danced. And I, at the end of this, I'm praying that you're going to do a oh, dance no, for no, us. No, He's no. probably not, but I'm going to see, see if I can we force don't, him to do it. We don't need to see any. Of that. Uh, well, we'll work on it. <laughs> um, uh, when you uh, when you told them you wanted to dance. They, that's got to be a rough conversation to have. That's almost as hard as, say, as me coming out to my parents. Yeah. Uh, that's a bold one. <laughs> I mean, it's, well, what I ended up doing was I just, like, kept it on the low. You know, like, I, I just did it. You and secretly Billy Elliot yeah. in your bedroom? I, I yeah. didn't tell anybody. Yeah. Like, I was just, i dance in my room or, yeah. like, I would do anything to, to be able to dance. Like, yeah. I didn't have a lot of money back then, so, and I didn't want to ask my parents because I didn't want them to know, so yeah. I'd, like... What volunteer kind of dance? Uh, hip hop, yeah. Okay. Um, okay. And it was, I don't, yeah, it was just like something that really um, resonated with me. And I, I did not tell them until maybe two or three years. Okay. Um, I think they found out, I don't know how they found out, but I think it was because I was doing a show, or maybe okay. they just noticed that I was out late a lot. Yeah, yeah, with yeah. Like, and being and sweaty coming back and, and they like, were and they thought that it was you out with girls and then they were so <laughs> upset even more upset to find yeah. out it wasn't just girls it was dance yeah and then My. i think we all just want to know when did the beatings come it oh they they luckily i started dancing when i was older like i was uh -huh. i started dancing when i was about 20. Oh, so yeah. you're too old to be spanked. Yes, exactly. Great. I had a bit of height on, on, on my parents, <laughs> um, luckily. Isn't that such an, a lovely point in your life when you're bigger than your parents and they don't <laughs> yeah. intimidate you anymore? Exactly. The nicest. Um, yeah, it's, it was a whirlwind. Um, yeah. But like for you, was it always fashion? Like Yes. Okay, I lied to my parents. I wasn't. Okay. Uh, I, well, I was kind of like you, where I would do it secretly, um, and so they also found out. Actually, no, no. I was a lot braver. I'm, you know, we're just gonna say I was a lot braver than you, Manny. Um, <laughs> Go I, for it. <laughs> you are. I, well, no, 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 no. So, okay, here's what it is. So, I they wanted me to be a doctor. Uh, a couple of my siblings had studied psychology and yeah. then it was, I'm the youngest. I and see. so I did what I was told. I was a good Asian boy and I, my mom told me that I must do this. And so I was gonna do this. And so I went to college the first year I was doing psychology. Hated it. I'm yeah. not an academic. I always did very well at school, but I never tried. Mm. Um, and so I hated um, college. I didn't wanna do that. And so I secretly dropped out and enrolled oh, wow. in fashion college. And I did my whole degree they never knew. They thought that I was going to uh, to regular college every day. I wasn't. And then when I finally graduated, I said, tricked you, guys. Like, I didn't do psychology. I graduated. What was fashion. it like breaking that news to your parents? Uh, so imagine telling your mom at like 13, 14 that you've gotten not only one person pregnant, but like the whole school pregnant. It's like <laughs> that level. Okay. Like that level. That's, that's I thought level. I was going to be killed at that point. Yeah. Like she had a look on her face, like she was reaching from a, for a samurai and oh she was going to chop my head off. Gosh. Thankfully, ended well. She was like, okay, it's too late. There's nothing I, I can do okay. about it. However, she knew I was a really good boy. Here's the thing. I was always a very sensible kid. Yeah. And I was like, I know that I've not done what you expected me to do, but I promise you, I will be your most successful child. That's fair. And I am. Yeah. So, <laughs> sorry, mom. Um, no, 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 I, I'm sorry, your siblings. Uh, no, but that's it. I, I think if you truly do feel like you can, uh, you can break that mold, you have to be willing to push so hard to prove your worth. Because you can't be the only one in your family who's a dancer and then end up on the streets. Like you have no. to, because then you ruin it for everybody else in your life, <laughs> yeah. in your family, like in your community. That is that, so true. They, yeah. You are constantly the punchline. You're like, you can't pull a Manny. <laughs> yeah. And so now they're like, you can't have that. But now they can say, yeah. oh, you can pull a Manny. Like you could be this thing. You don't just have to be a doctor or a lawyer or whatever. Yeah, no, it's funny you say that because yeah, I literally was the, the black sheep. Like there aren't any dancers or actors in yeah. my, my dad's side or my mom's side. Like yeah. it was, now that I think of it, yeah, there was kind of a lot of pressure in, yeah. in that. And is that the same for you? Was there yeah. anybody that you could look up to, look up to in your family? No one, no <laughs> one. And so I felt like I had to prove my worth. And mm. I got to the point where I, I wanted to retire relatively early anyway, but I got to the point where I, where I retired at 33 and people find that bizarre. Yeah. But I worked my butt off for years and years and years thinking I cannot fail at this now that I've told them that 
I'm, I'm leaving our culture behind, which is mm. I won't be the stereotypical um, kid. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to carve my own path. That gave me, uh, that gave me some strength like I've, I've never known. And I, was, and I was forcing myself every day to make sure that I got up. I worked, I, I worked a part-time job to make sure my businesses would succeed. I, I think without that, if I was somebody who was encouraged as a kid to embrace the arts, I may yeah. have been different. But knowing that I was going against the curve, it pushed me so hard to prove my worth. I can completely relate. Yeah, yeah. that's such a good point. Yeah, um, yeah like if, if my parents were like, you know, uh, fly, paint, yeah. yes, yeah. Um, do whatever you want. Yeah. Like, I don't think I'd be here. I don't yeah. think we'd be having this conversation. Yeah. Um, there's something about like kind of going against the current yeah. that really motivates you. How does it feel after all of these years doing something that wasn't something your parents planned on you doing? Mm. How does it feel to be in a position tonight where you're being honored? Um, oh, actually, can I, uh, this is a two part question. Okay. What did you think first of all when you were told? Yeah. And then how does that feel, how does it feel tonight? I thought it was a mistake. Like, Me yeah, too. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> yeah. no, that's, that's, you're probably, yeah. yeah. Like you're calling the wrong person, like this isn't, yeah. This isn't right. Um, but yeah, it's weird. And like, yeah. I like kind of going around this building and seeing, you know, people oh, just just walking out and seeing John M. Chu and John Cho, like those guys yeah. I've look, looked up to for a really long time. Yeah. And just to even cross paths with them is incredible. It's surreal. Um, yeah. yeah, it's. I have no words, it's nuts. Like, how about yourself? Uh, so, same, when my manager called, I said that there's gotta be a mistake. My first name is apparently quite a common Asian name. Okay. And so I thought there must be like a Mr. Tan, who they <laughs> think, because when I tell people before the show, when I yeah. say my name is Tan, they assumed my name was Mr. Tan, and when they meet me, they were expecting me to be your version of Asian. And ah. so they're always shocked. Um, and so I was saying to my manager, are you sure there's not like a something tan in this yeah. industry and he's being honored? And so we had to double check and they're like, no, it's definitely you. Um, oh and then today, I, it feels powerful. Mm. Like I, I feel powerful and that may sound incredibly arrogant, but I want to explain why. It feels powerful to be in a position where not only do I get um, to be on a show representing my people, then yeah. to be honored uh, by an organization that truly wants to move that needle forward, that wants to push that needle and, and show that we are worthy and that we are the same as our Caucasian counterparts and that we should be um, celebrated as much as everybody else. That feels powerful. It does. You deserve it, man. You deserve it also, <laughs> mate. You're killer on the show, but also just the fact that you get to represent something that's not really represented. I Don't get me wrong, I love me some cis white men. <laughs> but I've seen plenty of those for yeah. too many years. Like, it's time that we do see more diversity. There are so many more of us than there are cis white people. Yeah. It makes sense that we are now being seen. It's, uh, it's been a long time coming, but it, I just, I constantly feel, yeah, very, very lucky. Because I, mm -hmm. I see, you know, those guys or the, the older kind of ethnic actors and the opportunities that I've gotten today, you know, they didn't have the, the yeah. same opportunities back yeah. then. So I stand on their shoulders and absolutely, it's um, yeah, uh, it's an incredible experience right now. Yeah, it is. It's really cool. I did <laughs> want to ask though, yeah. I two things: one kind of fun and one kind of serious. Love. The the fun one was if you could do any other category other than fashion, <laughs> which one would it be? Like, Good which one could you? Um, I actually. Listen, I'm just going to keep it real. I would do really well at all of the other categories. <laughs> I do. Right. I kill it just with hair. I kill it with hair and grooming. I design my own house and it's gorgeous. I cook incredibly <laughs> well. I bake even even better. And I'm cultured. So, so it should just be the tan show. It's, we're yeah. going to call it Queer Eye for in Tan's eyes. <laughs> yeah. uh, and so, yeah, all of those. Oh, man. All of the, which one would you do? Um, I don't know. Well, like, because you guys all do it so well. Like, I mean, I think I'd resonate the most with maybe fashion, but... You're killing it tonight, I, mate. You are killing it tonight. I'm telling you right now that I was super intimidated to do this interview because I could just see Tan kind of like eyeing everything no, that no, I was no. wearing. I, I have been eyeing what you're wearing. Uh, what I just you're wearing. wanted to like and hide I love everything. the shoes. I like, like, I love the shoes. I needed 
no, dust them off. They're perfect. And I don't, even down I, to your I don't think my bow, my bow tie. I needed to get like We're a real bow tie. Real quick. Please. I had to make sure that it wasn't like a pre-tied one. Yes. Because, you I, know. I'm wearing a pre-tied one. Here's the thing. If you can find a quick trick to, that's going to help you get ready, do it. Okay. And cool. I don't I, want the pressure of a, of a jaunty bow tie on a night like this. If, if a fashion icon like can do that, <laughs> then I, I can. Well, thanks. I can do well, that. Well, thanks. Okay. And then what was your serious question? Um, it was what's the, the, the long-term goals. What, are, what do you see in the future? What is like. Ooh. Um, I'm, I'm going to give you a two-parter again. For sure. me, I um, I would like to believe that I've have I've, I'm carving out a space for myself to stay in this industry for a while, yeah. and I don't know what that will look like. But I do want to continue to represent my community, and if, I I know that I'm belaboring the point, but I there's like three of uh, my people who are really representing, yeah. and and that sucks. And so <laughs> yeah. I want to do all I can to stay in this as long as possible and try and give positive representation. Mm. So That's I don't awesome. know what that looks like, but hopefully I will still be able to stay in this uh, industry. Um, and then uh, I can't remember uh, the, my second point, so we're gonna leave it at that. Um, <laughs> Uh, any other good. questions? That's it, man. I feel like I've gotten to know you so much better, Manny. Do Same I here. still feel a little bit nervous and I'm blushing under my brown skin <laughs> that I'm getting to talk to Manny? Uh, yeah. No, uh, not at all. We don't we're gonna that. end it on this note. You guys, uh, he may not understand this, but Manny is the most attractive man on TV. And I'm, if I don't see go. him, I'm, if I don't <laughs> see him on uh, People's 100 Sexiest Men as at least top five, I'm gonna be pissed. That's a cut, guys, cut, cut. <laughs> it's a fact, guys. <laughs> Thanks, mate. I love you. Don't